Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the idea of joint distribution function. When you have uh, two random variables and they are both continuous. So here is the uh, mathematical formula related to that. You can see that we have uh, big F. Big F represents the uh, joint distribution function of x and y and because of that we have the first part here is related to random variable x and here is random variable y now recall what you have seen in the case of having one continuous random variable so when you have one continuous random variable say x yeah? and when you uh, talk about big F x you're talking about the probability of x taking a value that is less than or equal to this uh, certain value here denoted by small x now when you have two random variables together x and y so this uh, expression here is naturally get extended to include y so here we've got y is as an additional uh, feature here and similarly this expression here is also going to be extended to include uh, the next random variable which is y right here so we are interested in the joint distribution function so x and y uh, happening together defined as as such okay and therefore it makes sense that the process here is going to involve double integral instead of single integral remember in the case of one continuous random variable uh, this is what you have to do you have to integrate only one time uh, the function of uh, fs or ft or so you're going to integrate this and then uh, you have the limit from negative infinity to to x yeah so something like that, only uh, one time, one integral, and the limit here is x. So uh, in this case, what we have is double integral. So we've got this one uh, for representing x, and this one is representing y. We're just switching this for another um, variable, we call it s and t. So here we're going to do it with respect to ds and dt. And again, actually you can do it the other way around if you want. For example, you can uh, integrate that with respect to dt first and then ds. Uh, doesn't matter really. Um, depends on the situation. In most situations, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And uh, uh, the limit here, uh, because s is associated with x, so therefore the, the lower limit here is related to x, random variable x, and up above here we've got small letter x here. And this is the lower limit related to y, so this is what we're talking about. With t here represents um, y, really. So here we've got the lower limit for y, and up above here is uh, letter y. And um, if you are given this value you're given the joint distribution function and you are required to find the small f well you can do it by having uh, by differentiating this function twice so you can differentiate with respect to y first and then get the result and differentiate again with respect to x so there is um, twice the process which you have seen in the case of one continuous random variable here, you have seen that in order to get small f, you have to differentiate big F and you only do it once. But here, in this case, you're going to do it twice. So the first is uh, you, you can do it with respect to y first and then x, or you can do it the other way around. You can do it with respect to x and then y. It doesn't matter, okay? Let's look at uh, this example right here. Okay, so if the joint probability density of x and y is given by such, find the joint distribution function of these two random variables. So you can see that this is the answer. So this is the answer to this question. And I'm just going to explain to you how can we get this answer. Uh, first of all, uh, let us try and visualize how does uh, the graph here will, will look like. How can we sketch this function? 
for example, if you ask to sketch this joint probability density of x and y, how does it look like? Okay. Uh, remember, when you have one random variable, so if you have just uh, one random variable, fx, therefore your graph is just some sort of line. Okay. Um, but if you have f, x, and y, then your graph is in terms of um, surface. Surface. Okay, so if you have a line, uh, when you integrate f, x, you will get the, the area which is under the curve, which is under the line, the area under the line or the area under the curve, when you integrate this function. Now, when you integrate this function of two random variables, that means you are going to get volume because because the graph that you have is not a, it's not line it's it's a surface really so when you integrate this you will get a um, volume okay now let us imagine or let us try to uh, sketch how does this this function here uh, can be sketched into three dimensional planes so we're going to have three dimensional planes okay all right here we have um have x y which can be called z if you want okay and here we've got um perhaps this is y okay and another direction here is is x uh, this is how it might look like now we know that um, the limit of x is between 0 and 1 so here we've got so here down here is going to be this is if this is positive z down here we can imagine it to be a negative z yeah and you can also imagine this part here is going to be um, negative x really and this part right here uh, um, um, is going to be negative y in this direction so something like that mm. yeah okay right now uh, let's continue with this we know that this is at point zero uh, so the limit here uh, that we need to consider the range of x is between 0 and, and 1. So 1 may be somewhere here. Okay. And y, y may be somewhere here. So y is also between 1 and 0. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hang on. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Boleh ke skill dia kejap eh? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, maybe, you know, roughly. Maybe here. One. Alright, so um, that's uh, what's going on. Now, um, in order to start sketching, we can start considering this function here. So we have, what we have here is fxy is equal to x plus y and we can um, for for easier uh, notation i think we can just adopt this as z is equal to x plus y yeah it's easy to think about it in this manner and um let's try and imagine what happened when when y is zero so y is zero we said y is zero when y is zero then we got z is equal to x so what does it mean when z is equal to x uh, this is the graph uh, similar to what you have seen in, a, in in school when you have a function of y is equal to x when you have function y is equal to x it is really just a straight line uh, this is x and this is y yeah just a straight line uh, like this looking like this uh, where each value of y is equal to each value of x. That means if y is 0, x is 0, it must be the same. If x is 0 0.5, y must also be 0 0.5. If x is 1, y is 1. So in this manner, when y is 0, so when you set y is 0, we, we got z is equal to x. 
So now we're just going to consider the, the plane here. This is x and this is z, yeah. So you can imagine we have a graph that is going upwards uh, like that. Okay, so we have a graph uh, that may be uh, I just I just use the same color. So maybe this is also at point one. Uh, hold on. So this is at point one. Okay, so here that means uh, we have some sort of line that looks like this from to the line going to look like this straight line okay and it stops at one why well, stop it at one because uh that's that's the limit really x is between zero and one so this is how the line is going to look like you can imagine that to be as such yeah so that's the first part okay now um Okay, so now let's try and imagine what happened if we set uh, x equals to, to 0. If x is equal to 0, then what we have is z must be equal to y. So this is uh, the similar idea which you have, which I have already explained just now. So therefore, um, we know that uh, at this point right here so this is z this is z and y plane so this is z and y plane so at this point uh, we have the line looking like this something like that so straight line okay uh, okay so now mm, we know that we're going to get a surface that is like a flat surface sort of and um, the region that the surface is going to cover is just between this region this region this region this is the region where the region here says uh, 0 uh, x is between 0 and 1 and y is also between 0 and 1 so that is the region okay cover and also at this point i hope you can see at this point this is 1 and 1 so you can imagine uh, what if x is, is 1 and y is also equal to 1 so then the value of z is equal to 2 so you can imagine uh, the value of z at this point so this might not be 2 maybe somewhere here so there is some sort of a flat surface that is slanting a bit upwards yeah so maybe our surface is going to look like this um, i'm not so good at drawing actually or sketching but you can imagine that this is our surface that is tilting upwards tilting upwards from that point zero uh, it is slanting a bit upwards so we've got the surface that, that might look like this and actually I think uh, you know with technology with uh, uh, good software online you can uh, visualize it better um, for example I think uh, this is what I did with uh, some software online so this is uh, how it looks like you can see this is the the view the front view you can see this is the plane that we are talking about um, so it is uh, not entirely flat there is some degree of slanting so there is there is uh, the point here is at this point but the, the surface is a bit slanting it is not like flat totally flat yeah we've got a flat surface the surface is flat but it is slanting a bit so if you look uh, from this view this is the from above you can see that there is some sort of elevation here from this point so it's going in this elevation so that's why at this one and one point one and one the, the highest point for z is at two uh, i hope you get the idea <laughs> I hope so, please. Okay. 
Uh, right. Um, but you know, this is just about um, trying to imagine how this uh, function or how this can be represented in 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 graph. Okay, so we are having three dimensional uh, graph right now. Okay, and uh, our graph is now we are talking about surface now. Okay, surface. Okay. Um, so back to our original question, which is to find what is the um, joint distribution function, okay, for this uh, given PDF, joint PDF. So first of all, we need to consider how many interesting regions that we have. So for this one, uh, this is the region, like I said, this is the region where um, x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 1 now it could also be a scenario where if you consider this region so this region here okay i'm just going to use a different color for that one uh, this particular region here so this is a region where um, you can see that y is greater than or equal to 1 this is the region where y is already greater than or equal to 1 i hope you can see it but then x is still between 0 and 1 so this is another region which will be uh, quite interesting and then and we must consider this region okay okay next uh, is this region um this region here in this direction this region here where clearly you can see that this is the region where x is already greater than or equal to 1 okay but y y is still between 0 and 1 so you can see y is still between 0 and 1 so 0 and 1 Okay. And finally, this is the region, all of this. This is the region where x is greater than, sorry. This is the region where x is greater than or equal to 1, and y is also greater than or equal to 1. And we already learned that if you consider the range that is already outside the highest value of x and the highest value of y, automatically the, the value of distribution function or the joint distribution function is going to be equal to 1. And this is, uh, this is what's going on here because this is the region where you have already uh, extended beyond the highest limit of x and y. So the answer is going to be the cumulative, the joint cumulative distribution function is going to be uh, automatically 1. And of course, if you consider this region, this region is where y is um, less than or equal to 0. So this is the region, another region here. And when y is equal to less than or equal to zero we know that it goes in this uh, it is lower than the lowest limit here so we know that automatically the distribution function is zero at this at this part here okay mm. similarly if you have uh, this part mm, this one here this area behind it behind that so you have this one is x x less than or equal to 0 so that region here is going to be 0 as well okay so this denoted by this part okay when you have x less than or equal to 0 y less than or equal to 0 definitely the result is going to be 0 because it is not defined by by this so it goes beyond the the lowest limit so here it also goes beyond the lowest limit and therefore the joint distribution function for that is going to be zero so we have established uh, the answers to this uh, first and last part now we're going to look at 
the rest of it okay right uh, perhaps we can start by talking about this region first so we are going to talk about this region okay right. I need a space okay this one is this okay so we're going to talk about that region where um, first of all we are going to apply the formula which is double integral okay this is a double integral and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, refer to this formula here so this is the formula so what we have is we need to have uh, to change our function to s and t integrate it with respect to ds dt now i'm going to uh, show you how i do it uh, in a slightly different way i'm going to do it with respect to dt ds and you can try it at home and try and do this again with respect to ds dt and you should be able to get the same answer Okay, right, um, let us do this together. Okay, so I'm having this function here, uh, which is um, x plus y, and x is going to be replaced with s, and y is going to be replaced with t. Okay, so what we have next is uh, s plus sorry s plus t and instead of ds dt i'm doing it the other way around which is dt ds just to show you that this can be done okay so i'm going to uh, integrate with respect to t first and then s and we know that t here represents uh, y really so therefore the limit here is associated with y so here we have zero to y because zero is the lowest limit and s here represents x therefore the limit uh, associated here is going to be with respect to x which is 0 and, and x okay next we're just going to uh, integrate this with respect to t so what we have is x 0 so the answer is s it can be considered as a constant so when you integrate with respect to t we have s t and over here when you integrate with respect to t you have t squared over 2 and you're going to substitute that with y and 0 here we've got ds okay so substitute y into t so you have x 0 sy plus y squared over 2 and if you substitute 0 into this uh, the result is going to be 0 so uh, really we are uh, we, we are now like settled we don't need to minus with anything minus with zero okay and here we've got ds okay next we're going to uh, differentiate this part with respect to s so this becomes s squared over 2 y this one is a constant so if you integrate with respect to s you have y squared over 2 s and here is the limit x and 0 and just going to substitute x into uh, s so we have x squared over 2y plus uh, y squared over 2x and if you substitute 0 into this uh, the result is going to be um, 0 so really you don't need to subtract with anything and then we're just going to simplify uh, the expression here we can factor out the common terms so we have x and y x and y over 2 so we can take it out x y over 2 and here we have x plus y and this is the result uh, that is given on this part right here uh, this one okay so we are done with that okay right now let us consider uh, perhaps this one this this one okay we are ju I'm just following the notation given here, which is this one. We're going to consider this part. Okay.
again similar to the idea what we're going to do is uh, uh sorry we are going to consider what region again uh x greater than or equal to one okay x greater than or equal to one you are going to consider this region x greater than or equal to one uh zero y and one okay so now we have the function which is s plus t uh, i'm going to do it with dt ds again remember that t here is related to y okay t is related to y therefore the limit here must be related to y the lower limit is zero and the upper limit is going to be y because y is between zero and one so here we have uh up above here is y okay now for s, s is related to x, but you can see that x here is already exceeded above the highest limit. Okay, it already exceeded uh, uh, the highest limit of x. Therefore, for this one, we are going to uh, state the limit is between 0 and 1. Okay, that's the limit. 0 and 1 we cover the whole range already yeah because in this case x is already uh, exceeding the the highest limit okay all right so now what we're going to do is we are going to integrate that with respect to t what we have is 1 0 st plus t squared over 2 yeah and the limit is y and 0 uh, substitute y into um, t so we have s and we have y plus y squared over 2 if you substitute 0 into that the result is 0 so we don't need to do anything really next uh, we're going to take the result and integrate that integrate it with respect to s so we have s squared over 2y plus y squared over 2 s the limit is 1 and 0 I'm just going to substitute 1 into s so we have 1 over 2y plus y squared over 2 if you substitute 0 into s the result is 0 so that's it and um, we can simplify that by uh, factor out 1 over 2y and this is 1 plus plus y okay so this is the result that is given uh, right here okay right here now we're going to move on to the last part which is this one this one is y is already greater than or equal to one it is over the the range over the range here but x is still between the range zero and one okay all right now let's move on so what we have is we have to consider this range and also x between 0 and 1. So we follow the same idea uh, s plus t dt ds. Now t here is uh, related to um, y and if you see the limit of y here is already exceeding um, the highest range the, the 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 range of y is actually from 0 to 1 but here the the value has already exceeded 1 therefore the limit that we're going to consider here is going to be from 0 which is the lowest limit to 1 okay, the highest limit for s uh, which is related to x well you can see that x here is still between the defined limit which is 0 and 1 therefore here we're going to uh, write down the lower limit 0 but up here we're going to maintain it to x okay now next uh, we just apply the same process okay the same process and we have st plus t squared over 2 the limit is 1 and 0 ds uh, next we're just going to substitute all the values accordingly so we have s plus 1 over 2 okay so we've got ds next we are going to integrate the result here with respect to s so we got s squared over 2 plus 1 over 2 s and the limit is x and 0 
and here you will see that um, if you substitute x into s you get x squared over 2 plus x over 2 of course when you substitute 0 into it the result is 0 so you don't need to do any subtraction process for that and we can uh, simplify that to be x over 2 x plus 1 and this is the result uh, that you can see uh, given on this part right here okay of course if you want to try to get 1 what you can do is uh, you can integrate this function so if you want to try your hands to get the result you can integrate this function s plus t dt ds and you plug in the value 0 1 and 0 1 the result here should be equal to, to 1 okay so this is the the last part of the result that you you've seen right here okay all right uh, so i think we have done with this example you can try and do this on your own uh, perhaps you can try and and do it according to integrating it with respect to ds dt and see that you should be able to get the same results okay so ds dt so what i did or what i have demonstrated just now is dt ds so if you do ds dt just be careful um, the, the position of limits and so on okay so s still representing x and t still representing y just that we are doing it first we are integrating with respect to s first and then we're doing it once again with respect to t okay but still s still representing x and t is still representing uh, y similar to what i've shown you right here okay thank you very much for watching uh, see you in the next video